This Marquee Dragon video is sponsored by Shattered Crystal, game codes and items. Hello, I'm Marquee Dragon, also known as Marcus Eikenberry in real life, and I'm from MarqueeDragon.com, and today I've got Pat Wyatt with me, and Pat is working on Terra, if you couldn't tell. So, Pat, what is it that you do for Terra? I'm kind of the operations guy. I have focus on all the issues that people never like to hear about and only hear about when they're broken. That's when they care a lot. Well, so you're a fixer. That's right. <laughs> Just call me Mr. Wolf. Mr. Wolf? That's right. Okay. So, uh, so that'd be like operations, support, uh, security, analytics. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and people really don't care about those things until the game stops working. And all of a sudden, everybody wants to know what's wrong. Right. So we're going to try and make sure that none of those issues impact Terra. So um, now, I'm told you're famous, or you have some fame. So what did you do before Terra? Uh, well, I've been in the game industry for about 20 years, and I had the uh, good fortune to work at a small company that uh, went on to do great things. Warcraft, Starcraft, Diablo. Yeah. And then later on, I started a company called ArenaNet, which did Guild Wars. Oh, you did? I didn't know that. Okay, even I'm learning new things. So, having worked at those companies, you know then a lot of the right things to do for Terra. Well, I certainly hope so. You know, one of the great opportunities was getting into the game industry at the time when multiplayer games were just starting to become big. Mm -hmm. And so we got an opportunity to make some mistakes early. And people don't really forgive mistakes now, but back then you could sort of trip over yourself and, and uh, learn something in the process. And so I'm hopefully going to be able to apply those lessons to this game. I do remember when Ultima Online launched and we called it Ultima Offline because it was offline so much. <laughs> You know, and uh, but we all put up with it because we thought it was a great game. And uh, so, what is what is um, what does Terra stand for? Why call it Terra? Well, Terra is the name of the world that players are going to be living in, and it's a it's a game that's about action combat. Um, in a lot of games, the, uh, you're not really engaged with monsters. You can sort of look away from your keyboard and a macro can play the game. But in Terra, it's really much more like a console experience. You get to really interact with monsters like at the end of your sword. So if you're standing close enough, you can hit a whole bunch of them at once. Oh, sweet. I didn't realize that. So, and what is... Um what is, I guess, so you're in operations, and what, is that, are you part of the goals, do you set part of the goals for the game, or do you, I don't know, I guess what I'm trying to say is, is, how does your input translate into the game? Sure. When you're thinking about how the game is going to play, there's a lot of really subtle things that, um, really impact your experience, right? First off, I mean, it's important from an operational standpoint to make sure the game is always running. So you have to focus on uh, aspects like reliability. And it's something that players don't really ever see until the game stops working. So you have to make right. sure that, that you have highly reliable servers, that your lug counts are really low, uh, that you're running on really robust hardware, that you have a failover plan, you have a backup plan. So if something catastrophic happens, like a meteor hits your data center, you yeah. can save people's characters. Because let's face it, that's important. Yes. People have put thousands of hours in their character. Oh, meteors, me. meteor showers have to be survived. Meteor um, showers. But beyond that, I think Do you that expect meteor showers to come and uh, take yeah. out a data center? You have to plan for everything. <laughs> uh, probably, a, probably an earthquake is much more likely. Right? Oh, goodness. But, yeah. Uh, but I, I think there's also other things that are really impactful to the user experience, and that's things like user interface. And so one of the one of the things we saw when we first started looking at Terra was that it was you know it plays really well on a keyboard and mouse, but it seemed like a natural game for a, a console controller. Mm -hmm. And so we pushed the developers to add that feature to the game. And now if you go and play at some of the demo stations we have here, you can see that it's a great experience, whichever type of control style you like. So that user in impacting experience is kind of the thing I like to focus on. Or another example is when you first start playing a game, all the players want to play 24-7 the first month. And so you see much higher population load than you're going to see the rest of the history of the game. Because everybody's okay. playing at once. And especially they're all concentrated in one area. So what are the types of things that you can do to correct for that? You know, you, you can buy a lot more servers, but then what happens is when people spread out, the world feels empty. So right. instead, some of the things that we're doing are we're going to allow players to transfer their characters between the servers freely during the initial launch period. No cost, immediate transfers. Right. So that they're able to play right away without waiting at long queues. 
And so it's necessary to think about the design of those aspects so that players can do them right away. It's supposed to have to wait for a maintenance this, this period. This is all the stuff that nobody, no player thinks about, but is so important to them, they just don't know it. Right. When they're, when they're sitting in some other game with an eight-hour queue going, why does this have to happen? Eight-hour queue is, is nuts. That's right. So we're <laughs> going to make sure that stuff doesn't happen. Actually, eight-minute queue and people are already calling it nuts. That's right. Yeah. So we're, uh, do, do we have a launch date yet? 2011. 2011, okay. And what is, what is your hopes for the game? I mean, where, where do you want to be, you know, a year from launch? I think that the place we'd like to be is just to have a thriving community. And I think that Terra really has the capability to make that happen. There's, you know, a lot of players are really willing to try new games. If you look at the sales figures for a lot of MMOs, they have a huge spike at launch. And the reason why is because lots of players have played previous MMOs and they enjoy right. the experience. And the real challenge is to make them stick around. And a lot of games have had trouble with that because they don't really spend enough effort on thinking what the end game is going to look like, what the community experience is going to look like. And I think that with Terra, we have a huge opportunity to capture a lot of gamers because we've thought about those issues up front. It's got a great immediate gameplay impact. The artwork looks great, and the play style is, is uh, phenomenal. It's really going to draw players in and keep them there. But beyond that, you have to think about what is the experience for the level 20 player, for the level 40 player, for the level 60 player, what's going to keep them sticking around for the long term. And I think that's where having an experienced development team like Terra does, that knows about these issues, knows how to address them, is going to make for an experience that allows players to stick around for a long time and creates a game that people will be playing for years. So what is uh, uh, what is content going to look like after release? How, so are you going to be constantly putting in new stuff so it keeps it all fresh? Or are you going to do big patches? Or what, what do you anticipate the style will be? Our experience has been that players really like to see content in big patches. If you dribble out a piece here and there, it's not the same experience as having a whole new world to explore all at once. True. And so our goal is to release very large scale expansion sets that are going to give players a lot of new areas of the game to explore, new features, new skills, new armor sets. And uh, you know we'll, we'll be working on those after launch. Cool. So I think uh, I think that's about all the questions I have for you. Uh, and we're going to take a another video. We're actually going to show you gameplay, and it looks really awesome. The first video we, the first interview we shot. Ah, uh, well, you know, I'm not so sure we need to see all that stuff. We're going to learn more about the people. The next, after I saw it, after that, I said, oh, we got to go find them again, and let's show, show some gameplay right and on. everything because it looks wonderful. Well, thank Very you good so much. work. Thank, thank you, you for the interview.